Ah, my head. What? Oh, oh, I'm back. Wait, what day is it? Wait, it's October? It's been seven months since I posted my last video? Man, remind me not to get stuck in another wormhole. Time travel always gives me a headache. Wait, why is everyone wearing masks? Oh, uh, whatever. Anyway, I mean, while I'm here, I might as well talk about an island filled with tiny dinosaurs. Let's travel back in time to the late Cretaceous period, about 72 to 66 million years ago, the dinosaur's prime time. This is the period of dinosaur superstars like Tyrannosaurus, Velociraptor, and Triceratops. But where we're going, there's not going to be any of those guys. We're going to meet some new, stranger creatures. As we travel over Europe, we see a very unfamiliar sight to us Holocene dwellers. During the late Cretaceous, the earth was warm and tropical, and the seas were much higher than they are today. Almost all of Europe, rather than being one continent, was a series of large islands in a shallow subtropical sea, the perfect prehistoric vacation spot. Except, you know, for all the big carnivorous dinosaurs. One of these islands, a landmass about the size of Ireland, is part of what we call present-day Romania. Welcome to Hatseg Island. Unlike some of its surrounding islands, Hatseg was encompassed by a deep marine ocean, and it was located somewhere near 120 miles from the nearest landmass, totally cutting it off from the rest of the world. And weird things happen to animals who are cut off from the rest of the world. Take for example Australia. Around 180 million years ago, this island continent split off from Gondwana, so its fauna have had little to no contact with the rest of the animals on the Earth, and they began to evolve separately from everyone else, and adapting to their unique habitat in a very distinct way. I mean, come on, just look at this weirdo. Similarly, the primates lineage stranded on Madagascar turned into lemurs, quite different from the other lines of primates across the world. What I'm trying to say is, isolation makes things weird, and that was no different in the Cretaceous period. For example, meet Magyarosaurus. This dinosaur was a sauropod in the clade Titanosauria, and Titanosauria is an apt title. These dinosaurs were titans. Some of the largest land animals in history fell into the clade Titanosaur, animals such as the massive Patagon Titan from Argentina, a dinosaur who was around 121 feet long and could weigh up to 76 tons. Magyarosaurus wasn't quite as big as its South American cousin. Instead of 121 feet long, Magyarosaurus came in at around 19 feet and weighed just over one ton. And it wasn't the only Titanosaur. Magyarosaurus was joined by Palutitan, a close cousin. This dinosaur, however, was about the same size, shorter than a school bus. In fact, none of the dinosaurs on the entire island grew to be much bigger. These dinosaurs apparently hadn't gotten the memo that they were supposed to be huge and fearsome. But why is this? Why was this island so devoid of gigantic dinosaurs? Well, the answer is simple there probably wasn't enough food. This phenomenon is an example of what we call island dwarfism. When animals get stuck on islands, along with becoming weird, a lot of them become small too. This is most likely to help preserve the food sources on the island. If Hatseg Island was filled with gigantic tree-munching titanosaurs, the ecosystem might not have been able to support all of those animals, who would have needed to feed constantly just to support their gigantic bodies. These tiny dinosaurs needed far less food. Another example of this dwarfism is Struthiosaurus, one of the smallest known nodosaurs, and Zalmoxes, a small herbivore related to the famous Iguanodon. But this wasn't relegated specifically to herbivores. There is no evidence of any large theropod dinosaurs on the island either, and we only have adequate remains for one carnivorous dinosaur. That's Balar. Named after a mythical Romanian dragon, Balar was small, similar in size to Velociraptor, at around 6 feet long and 3 feet tall, and for a while, scientists thought it was closely related to Velociraptor too. Its skeleton seemed to be reminiscent of the Dromaeosaurs, 
the family of small, feathered carnivores, including Velociraptor and Deinonychus. However, there was one marked difference between Baylar and its cousins. Remember, island animals get weird. You know that big, scary sickle claw Velociraptor had on its foot? Yeah, Baylar had two of them, two of the sickle claws on each foot, instead of just one, and it made this creature quite unique. However, there may be a reason for its weirdness within the Dromaeosaur family. Notably, it may not actually have been in the Dromaeosaur family. While originally thought to be a close cousin to the raptors, recent analysis seems to point in the direction of Baylar being closer related to modern birds than the Cretaceous dinosaurs. It may have used its double claws for perching on trees rather than hunting like Velociraptor. Other than Baylar, there has been evidence for other carnivorous dinosaurs on Hatzeg, but this has been few and far between, mostly just random teeth and bone fragments. With two specimens found to date, Baylar is the most well-known theropod from the island, but that doesn't mean the island wasn't dangerous. While the dinosaurs on the island got smaller, it seems, the pterosaurs grew larger. Particularly these guys, the Asdarkids, a family of flying reptile that grew to gigantic proportions. Two species in particular were prevalent on Hatzeg Island. Eurasdarko was a species with a wingspan of around 9 feet, and may have snacked on smaller animals, using its beak to pluck them from the ground. We don't really have a lot to go on with this animal, as the only remains we have are some neck vertebrae, finger bones, and other yet unidentified bones. We can extrapolate, based on this evidence, that Eurasdarko fell into the Asdarkid family, and so it probably looked and acted a lot like its cousins within the family. But the real giant pterosaur was another Asdarkid, called Hatsigopteryx. Named after the place where it lived, Hatsigopteryx was a true giant, with an estimated wingspan of almost 40 feet. This animal, unlike other pterosaurs such as Pteranodon, probably wasn't piscivorous. Instead, Hatsigopteryx, much like Eurasdarko, would have hunted like a stork, scanning the ground from the skies until it found a tasty-looking meal, descending down and grabbing them in its long, sharp beak. Unlike storks or Eurasdarko, however, Hatsigopteryx would have eaten dinosaurs. Its size would have made Hatsigopteryx the apex predator of the island, feasting on the tiny, defenseless titanosaurs and other small animals. Hatzig Island was a unique place in the Cretaceous period in that it was ruled by pterosaurs rather than the giant dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus. Hatzig Island was home to a whole host of other creatures too, of course. Various species of lizards, small mammals, and crocodilians. Carbon isotopes from the rocks suggest that the island could have been covered in a dry woodland, a forest island filled with tiny dinosaurs and giant pterosaurs. It truly is one of the stranger, more mysterious Cretaceous landscapes. Hopefully, as the future progresses, scientists can find out more about Hatzeg Island and similar strange places all through time. Until then, come back here to learn more about the prehistoric world, and consider subscribing to stay up to date with what I put out. Or, you know, don't. I can't tell you what to do, it's a free country.